Up next, a look at Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion and what's different in this new Gloomhaven intro box set when compared to the original Gloomhaven. Thank you, Tabletop Renaissance, Windsor's newest game store, for providing us with a review copy of Jaws of the Lion. All right, so Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion is published by Cephala Fair Games, as you'd expect. It was designed by Isaac Childress, same as the original, and features artwork from a number of artists. And I do apologize if I get these names wrong. So we got Francesca Berard, Kat Bach, David Bach, David Demerit, Alexander Eichel, Jason D. Kingsley, and Josh T. McDowell. I uh, was originally released as a Target exclusive in July 2020, and interestingly, this is the first time this happened. It was only a one-month exclusive, which is something new for the board game industry, then was released to the rest of the world, including here in Canada, in August. The best way for you to see what you get in this new Gloomhaven box set is to check out our Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion unboxing video on YouTube. Yeah, that one's prize being surprisingly popular, so I I'm really happy with the way that one turned out. All right, so we are going to start off with the components here. Normally, I don't go through all the components, but what I want to talk about is what's new. So what are the new components? What's something different than you get in the original? And I got to say the first thing, one of the most welcome additions, we were talking about this when we were talking about the Shadowrun box set the other day, is a two-page, well, one-page, one two-sided, welcome to Gloomhaven guide that not only walks you through how to use the contents of this box, and what everything is, but it actually tells you how to organize and sort them, which I thought was really cool because this version of Gloomhaven comes with a plastic box insert and a number of baggies. And this guide actually tells you what to bag with what and where to put it all in, which is pretty dang cool. Now, I think it is valuable to point out, however, that you haven't really loved this insert. It's not. The thing is, it's just not as good as it could be. And it just feels like they needed more playtesting or like the design graphics when they had it in AutoCAD or whatever people use nowadays worked great, but then when they physically produced the product, it didn't work out as well because of mold shrink or something. Like it's just, it's so close, right? So one of the things they give you is a tray to put in all the, the chips. There are two destroyed tokens that will not fit. Like they, they literally go over the top. Like there is a lid and it kind of holds them in place. And then to fit the rest, they fit, but you have to perfectly stack them. So you can't just like toss all the money in. You need to stack it to get it to fit. And then you get to the fact that the monsters, when you organize them, which we'll get to this in a minute, are in baggies. There's nowhere to put these baggies. So they basically just get dumped in the box. And it just, it's, it's like, it's so close. And that's what frustrates me. It is, I got to say, better than having to go out and buy an $80 box insert to organize my game. So into the rest of the components, this box includes four completely new characters, all of which are unlocked at the start of the game. So there's no spoilers here. Uh, these are designed so they can be also be used as new classes in Gloomhaven, which is a, a nice addition. So that aspect of Jaws of the Lion can be an expansion to the original as well as being characters you can play in this game. Now, as part of the onboarding system that we're going to mention multiple times tonight, these card decks are split up more than in Gloomhaven. They're not just one through character level nine. You start off with a set of eight cards, for example, and there are only six of them. And then there's you're going to slowly more, add more cards because there's two B cards. And after you finish the first scenario, you swap out two A cards for these B cards. And then eventually you unlock your one cards and then you unlock your X cards. So it's, it's definitely split up more. And those A cards... Are, are have more information on them and are simpler they have text boxes on them and these new cards are very clear about how they work what you can do and in fact notably superior in their clarity compared to a normal gloomhaven card yeah exactly we're gonna when we get into some of the changes in this game some of the changes i made for the cards are fantastic now there are 16 monsters surprisingly they're not all new 10 of them are new Three of those new ones are boss monsters. I did think it was a little strange that they overlap. I kind of figured they give you all new monsters or not new monsters. Now, are these monsters portable over to the main game? Not at all. Not at all compatible, even with the exact same name. The decks are different. They are standalone. They are not meant to be combined with the original. They are retooled and reworked. Now, I don't know if they're made simpler, or clearer, or what, what the honest difference is. Uh, the one thing I will note, every monster deck had a the usual where the monster just did a basic move and attack gloomhaven not every monster had that so that's at least one simpler card so i think in general all the cards are simplified slightly but definitely not compatible 
Now, what you won't find in this box are map tiles. No hexes here. No things you have to fit together. Or overlays to go on maxes. Maxes? On maxes. On maps. Sorry. No overlays to go on the maps. Instead, all the scenarios and maps are presented in a lay-flat spiral-bound book. Uh, there's the scenario book. It's got 25 scenarios. The first five are introductory scenarios that slowly introduce the rules of play one by one. In addition to the main scenario book, there's this weird supplemental scenario book, which I thought was a kind of brilliant way to do it. And basically, it's what you use if they couldn't fit everything in the first book. And what's neat is sometimes they use that to make the map bigger. So I thought that was cool. And to be honest, it would be rather disappointing if the maps were all small enough to fit in that one lay flat book. And thankfully, they didn't start changing scale yes. or something horrible like that in order to make it fit into that one yeah, there's, to be honest, there's no reason you couldn't overlay map tiles onto this or the overlays from Gloomhaven on this. So again, these are standalone scenarios. Um, mythic, mythically, myth-wise, uh, background, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, fluff, the, the story-wise, this lore. story actually happens, the lore is that this game happens before Gloomhaven. This is actually a prequel to the story told in Gloomhaven. So there is no actual overlap in scenarios, but there's no reason you couldn't like put door tiles on the doors in this game instead of using the doors that are there, for example. Uh, you do get a new map. Uh, this is significantly smaller than the one in the original game. The original game's a nice big fold-out board. This is just one solid mounted board. This just shows the town of Gloomhaven itself, and you get a set of 25 stickers that you'll put on the map, one for each scenario. No, the stickers aren't actually that useful considering it's on rails at this point anyway so far what you've seen yeah well again i haven't even gotten through the five intro scenarios at this point so i i don't want to talk to that because i'm hoping it branches at some point in the future but i don't actually know that right. um interesting to note for the stickers i don't remember if i talked about this later in the show notes is uh they do note the stickers are optional because in this game unlike the original gloomhaven there is nothing you need to destroy there is nothing that's moved from the game so if you did not use the stickers, you could easily pass on your copy of Jaws of the Lion to someone else when you were done with it. All right. Now, as for the rules, they're split over two different booklets. Anyone who's played a Fantasy Flight game is going to get flashbacks here, though I got to say they're written better than most things from Fantasy Flight. Uh, there's a Learn to Play guide, which very slowly and deliberately walks you through how to play the game. This is the type of book where you don't even read it before you sit down to play. You read it out loud with your group as you open up the box. It holds your hand through the first five scenarios. And each new scenario is going to add new elements to the game and very distinctly just points out this is all you need to know. Along with this guide, there is a glossary. Now, this is the rule book. And what it is, is this is all the keywords and core concepts in detail. And the only time you even touch that book is if something comes up during play and you're a little confused. Like, well, wait a minute. I'm doing a ranged attack. What's line of sight in this? Or, hey, wait a minute. How does this work? You're going to reference it. Well, hopefully that means we don't have to do another FAQ read through for this one. Though, knowing how popular they are, maybe we will anyway. Yeah, the, the, sadly, what we do need to do is a errata read through for the scenario book and the rule books, which is slightly disappointing for a game that was just published. Now, there are a number of new uh, cards. There are event cards that are, again, specific to Jaws of the Lion. There are item cards, battle goal cards. All the scenarios take place in Gloomhaven, so there's no road events here. Now, regarding the battle cards, this is an interesting one. It's a note that some of these goals were inspired by a fan-created deck that was called Satire's Extended Battle Cards. And I guess Isaac worked with Satire to actually adopt some of these into Jaws of the Lion. And I got to thank our guy in the chair, Temujin, for that bit of uh, information, that little bit of trivia. I thought that was really cool. Now, as for the rest of the stuff, it's all stuff we've already seen in Gloomhaven. So I'm not going to go into details about standees and monster and tiles and element boards and all that stuff is all the same. This is just the new stuff. So now that we know about the interesting new stuff that comes with Jaws of the Lion, how about you tell us about some of the actual rule changes and deviations from the original Gloomhaven. Yeah, there's a surprising number of these. Like everything I'd seen online, people talking about this, everyone's talking about the first two things I'm going to mention, which is uh, focus changing in line of sight, but there's more to it than that. Um, so in addition to the fact there's a learn to play book, right? And these five introduction scenarios that slowly teach the rules. Like that is an, a fantastic improvement just off the original right there. There are actual rule changes. And the biggest one that people like to debate is a monster focus change. 
Now focus is based on how far it takes a monster to move and attack. Ties are now broken on initiative, and this mostly affects ranged attacks. And this is about a six paragraph thing in the rule book, and I'm not going to get into it here. Uh, you can read the full text on the blog post um, that will be published for this on the written review. I actually like wrote out the full text. But if you just Google Jaws of the Lion Focus, you can find lots of people debating it and talking about it. There is a change. Now, this was done to make things simpler and quicker, to make the man monster AI quicker and easier to figure out. A number of people are talking about adapting this to Gloomhaven. Isaac himself prefers the original Gloomhaven rules, but has said, play the game how you like. Well, at least on the surface, things certainly seem to uh, be improved. And judging by how fast you burn through those first three scenarios, even though they, they are, of course, learning, you know, rank, uh, graded scenarios, the speed change has definitely been noticeable. Yeah, it's definitely... Plus, we do have a lot of experience playing Gloomhaven, so that's something I probably should have noted at the top of this. At this point, we have not finished a Gloomhaven campaign, but we have played probably 50 sessions of Gloomhaven, so we are not new to Gloomhaven. Uh, line of Sight. This is a very welcome change to me. This is so simple now. All it is is if you can draw a line from any part of the attacker's hex to any part of the target's test without crossing a wall, you have Line of Sight. Yeah, and this, and, you know... <laughs> Thank God. As a viewer, listening to Gloom, Gloomhaven players gauge and work on line of sight and, and, and debate and argue about line of sight was not the most fun mm. part of the viewing experience. Oh, so many weird rules for measuring from a corner that was touching a wall, not counting, and need blind enemy some of the scenarios. No, this is, this is a huge improvement. Now, here's one that people may overlook as a change, and that is a significant change to advantage-disadvantage rules that makes the game simpler. This comes to when an ambitious, ambiguous uh, situation comes up. And in the original Gloomhaven, if you had an ambiguous situation, so I drew a plus two and a plus one wound, what's better, right? And that's totally situational, so it's ambiguous. In Gloomhaven, you're stuck with the first card you drew. In Jaws of the Lion, you get the pick. Right. Well, as long as you're in the monster, it's plus two all the way. Uh, interesting. Uh, yeah, so it's the reason, apparently, that Isaac mentions, and we'll go back, just jumping back to focus a little bit, the reason he, he suggests the sticking with the original focus is uh, to not confuse Gloomhaven players. So yeah. if you are a Gloomhaven player and you are used to the initial focus rules as they have always been, go ahead and keep playing those because all we did was change them to simplify the game for new players. And that's the reason for the change and why he supports, why he plays with the old focus rules. Mm -hmm. All right, another one I really like is the new iconography showing which monsters to spawn depending on the player count. Uh, it's right on the map. It's got bars underneath. It is completely clear. Um, that is one that I have seen people mess up many times with the original. Now, the benefit of not having generic tiles right there, but that also means, I'm guessing, that you can't do random dungeons in Jaws of the Lion. No, there are no random dungeon rules. So there is a, a Basically, if I don't mention it in the, the start there, it's probably not in Jaws of the Lion, even if it was in Gloomhaven. Now, another welcome change is that players can now trade items. This is huge. Plus, when you find treasure during a scenario, the player who found that treasure can use it during that scenario. Also, even if they couldn't hold that item at the start of the scenario, they can use it. So even if you already had two items, you get a third, you can still use it. And then when you're selling, this is a, another, this is a change I'll bet you a lot of people are going to miss. When selling items, you now round up instead of round down when selling. But note, one of the things that is in Gloomhaven that isn't in this is renown. There is no reputation score in Jaws of the Lion. So prices on the card aren't going to be modified. So you don't get like a discount for being the heroes or pay more for doing badly. Um, also, though, you still can't trade or share gold. So gold is still personal, but items can be shared. Which, which I don't know. I mean, you are supposed to be playing parties in both games, in Gloom and in, I mean, you are, you are a group, a party. Uh, uh, you're a mercenary company that is in it for the money. That is... Uh, Strictly stated right in the rules. So I think that's where the money thing comes in. Right. And that was the original argument for not trading items either. Right. Okay. It's, it's you're a party, but you're a party of mercenaries. Right. Which in Gloom, you are not heroes either necessarily. You you can totally go either way with the reputation system. Right. 
but yeah, the 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 if you can trade items, why can't you trade gold? I can totally get. The problem is it would affect a lot of the battle goals, which is an aspect of the game that has a little people playing for themselves. Right. Uh, still talking about items, but specifically treasure and loot. Uh, monsters can now loot treasure tiles. So watch out for slimes next to treasure chests. Though thankfully there are no slimes in this, but ooze, if you're going to port the rules over to the main Gloomhaven, those ooze are going to eat up those treasure tiles and some of those things. Uh, but in general, yes, they can loot the treasure. Um, Subburn monsters drop coins. And I got to say, it's silly that they drop coins. Like, it doesn't make sense that they're supposed to be some monsters, but so much easier to keep track of. One of the things I hate in the original Gloomhaven is trying to keep track of what was a summon and what wasn't. Even using the Gloomhaven helper app made that difficult. Um, another change that to me just made sense is in the previous rules, the rule for an empty square was there is nothing in it. No tile, no overlay, nothing. They now said coins don't count, which is actually a huge just makes sense yeah, that the think, coins on the floor don't take up space. Yeah, there's some interesting shift there, but I think redefining the empty space really just makes a lot of sense and avoids confu really some really easily confusing uh, things that you could be looking at. Uh, there is a new step to combat that I like. Uh, this is using initiative tokens. These are something totally new in Jaws of the Lion. Every character and every monster comes with this tiny initiative token. And this is neat because all it is is when, when you've all flipped over your cards, you set these tokens up in order, which is great for keeping track of when who, everyone's going and is even better for players who forget what initiative they pick. Now, normally for our Gloomhaven games, we do use the Gloomhaven helper app, so it's taken care of. But for people who don't use the app, a, a nice addition. Yeah, and I think we, we do generally recommend you should be using the app. But if you, uh, you, know, if you prefer the au naturel version, uh, it is definitely a major benefit. I do have one complaint is they are too tiny and all the monsters are the same color. It would have been nice to tell them apart from across the board, but it's still a nice touch. Like it, it, it could have been better, but it's, it's fine. Yeah. Now, another one, we kind of hinted at this one earlier is the fact they have added dotted lines to the ability cards. And what the dotted line means is that they separate individual actions. This makes the card so much easier to read and to see what part of the card applies to what other part of the card and how things interact and you can check out our faq from gloomhaven about for lots of rants on that particular topic yes they the the, the card layouts are so much better <laughs> all right the final rule change and this is another one that people are probably going to miss if they if they're not careful is that city events have become mandatory in gloomhaven anytime you end a scenario and go back to town you can do a city event in Jaws of the Lion, after every scenario, you must do a city event. And no, there's an errata for the end of scenario four where it doesn't remind you of this. Well, so now that we know what's changed, what are your thoughts on these changes? All right. So I'm pretty sure you can get uh, the gist already from what I've had to say. I am extremely impressed overall by what Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion brings to the table. Like almost everything added to this box was done to make Gloomhaven a more accessible game, something that could appeal to a more casual audience. Because Gloomhaven is not a light game. It is not an Ameritrash, chuck and dice, D&D &D in a box style game. This is a hand management, resource management, Euro style game. It's a cooperative puzzle. Whereas Jaws of the Lion makes that puzzle easier. I've, and this onboarding and accessibility starts even with the price, right? Uh, Jaws of Lion is very, in my very reasonably priced for what you get in this box. This is not a light or small box. The fact that it has a box insert is really nice. And the fact it even has instructions how to sort your bits is another part of the onboarding system I like. Though the highlight really is that learn to play guide. The first five scenarios that slowly introduce the rules, one game aspect at a time is brilliant. Like, I am, I'm not going to get into full details here, but, like, they did su such smart things as in the first scenario, you don't have a monster attack deck. All the monsters just act the same. They act on initiative 50, they move one and attack anyone next to them. Done. So you don't even have to worry about that aspect of seeing monsters doing different things every turn. And it's a great way to teach the monster AI for melee combat. Like, it's just little things like that. Every single one of the rule changes I thought were great, welcome changes. I wouldn't complain about a single one of them. Uh, some of them 
seem to be done to make the game easier and play easier to play and understand. Uh, specifically, the new focus and line of sight rules are definitely simpler. Other ones seem to be things players have been asking for and wanting in house ruling, especially if you look through board game geek threads, uh, like the ability to trade items and f having a way to track initiative that's better than having to remember what cards people played. So I, I think it's a mix of things to make the game more accessible and things that I think people have been hoping for. Right. So now one thing, and this came up in the chat room, and I think it's, it's something I saw watching through some of your first plays is as experienced Gloomhaven players, right? So people who, who know Gloomhaven and know and, and have worked out a lot of the quirks and things, what about these intro games in particular has sort of been a little problematic because, again, you're actually having to unlearn mm -hmm. a lot of things that you know. The hardest thing by far is using rules that haven't been introduced yet. So in, like, there is no such thing as a long rest until scenario four. There is no such thing as using the basic abilities of your card in scenario one. I, that's either introduced in scenario two or three. I can't remember which one right hand. So it's that whole, you're just going to play expecting all the rules to be there. Uh, so some of it is error proof. So for example, by giving you those A cards, there are no burn cards. There's no cards that are lost as spending them. So you can't screw that up. Yeah. And there are no elemental infusions on the A or B cards. So again, you're not going to make think of using and that's where they provide actually with sample monster decks too there are the vermling raider deck right but there's also the basic vermling raider deck that's only four cards and again isaac was brilliant enough that none of those have push or pull and none of those have element infusions so you can't screw it up if it's not there but then there's the other things where you're just like the the short rest the long rest the using your basic attack um, things like that, you're just going to be able to discard cards instead of taking damage is something you can't do in the early scenarios. So it's the unlearning what you've learned could be a problem, but to be honest, it's not going to hurt. Like the right. only reason I got a little frustrated with the fact we once is to record the video as a, day, so we could learn how to play or right. we are using, we're not supposed to be able to eat it. But as players who are playing Gloomhaven, just use the full rules. Like it's, it's not going to, you're not going to break anything. Right. And trust me, the scenarios, I got to say, this is. They're almost too easy in a way, the, the same way you have a problem with uh, Harry Potter Hogwarts battle. Right. The ramp up at scenario four is significant. It is, it is a big jump. As seasoned Gloomhaven players, we got someone down to one hit point. Like it was, it was close. We could have easily had one character exhausted. I have seen other local gamers and players who are not familiar with Gloomhaven get very frustrated by scenario four. And so the onboarding's nice, but it does ramp up significantly. Right. But in a way, it has to, because Gloomhaven is not an easy game, and it's not meant to be. It's not meant to be an RPG. It's not meant to be the game is the DM, and it's going to walk you through a story. No, it's going to try to punish you and beat you down. Now, I think I know the answer to this, but uh, the ch they asked in the chat, if you are an ex experienced Gloomhaven player, can you skip to uh you know four or five or or do you need to go do you need to go through the uh the beginner adventures for one you'll need to go through to get the experience so unless you're like you could just jump to the reward section and write it down and do it but you know what it was fun like i i don't see why not like being able to kick some vermling butt in scenario one was kind of fun plus another big part of gloomhaven is learning your cards and learning your character class so this is a good way to get used to your character class though again because you swap out your cards that's a little little weird. So here's, here's a side note. So I'm, I'll finish your, yours and then I have a side note. Um, I just don't see why you wouldn't. And the other thing is like we were able to finish the first three scenarios in one night in about an hour and a half, I think. And that's with like streaming and, and moving microphones and moving cameras. Like they're, they're not long. Once you get to scenario four, you're still – that one's maybe 45 minutes to an hour. You could probably play through all five at once uh, in one sitting if you if you had a long enough game night. And you I just streaming. don't see why you wouldn't. Yeah, if you weren't streaming. I just don't see why you wouldn't, to be honest. You could, though, but definitely get the rewards. Like, like because you're going to need those to get the experience right. before. Again, I'm, I, I'm slightly spoiling things here, but you, you will need to, to have the experience to get into the main the main Makes story. Sense. Plus, you're, and you, you're going to want to read out the story and stuff like that. Uh, scenario one, if anything, you could probably really, like, there's really, like, come on, the monsters don't even, you don't even flip up actions. They, they move one and attack two right. over and over and over. 
Um, now to the other topic. This is something I actually found a little frustrating. They change the deck so often. So you start off with six cards that it walks you through very clearly. They're all basically moves and attacks and possibly heals. Like there's no push pull. There's no elemental infusions. Um, they haven't even added burst or multiple target attacks at this point. And you're like, all right, got great. Then they take two of the cards and they just change those two cards. And you get new versions of those cards that are more complicated. One of those is going to be a burn card. So now you can do something really cool, but you lose the card. And you're going to also add possibly a push pull or a status effect, a stun or poison or something, right? And But it's still the same card. It does the same thing. Then you get your one cards. And then suddenly you have to basically relearn the whole character. Despite the fact the cards have the same names, they no longer do the same things. So, for example, a card way through the game was I can move the enemy three squares, like right from the beginning. I'm like, all right, I move them three squares, I move them three squares. All of a sudden, it not only moves them one square unless dark is infused, and then I can infuse dark to move them two more. And that is such a different card and so much more situational. And there was definitely a learning curve. And again, that hits at scenario four. So besides the difficulty ramping up at scenario four, you now have to relearn your entire character, which it just felt odd. Like I, like the, the basic cards were so far from the cards you ended up with. And I kind of get it because the basic cards have to be there to teach you. And while the one cards have to be there because you can play these characters in Gloomhaven. So they have to be compatible and comparable to the other level one cards for the other Gloomhaven classes. So there's definitely a thing there. So so that is an odd feeling. I, I, I'm not saying good or bad, but there's a definite, like I said, a jump. You hit scenario four and it's like, oh, I got to learn how to play my character again. I thought I knew what I was doing. And I don't know how much Sean's going to edit the live stream, but you can see it in the live stream because there is a significant section of silence as Deanna and I basically relearn how to play the game. Yep. There were some there were some clips and cuts and, and zooms, but uh, you know, again, even even uh, you know, it's it's an hour. So the episode one uh, is is one hour, start to finish, including all of the you know general. Hey, you're watching well, YouTube. Well, how to play YouTube. that one? I basically yeah. teach you how to play Gloomhaven in it. Yeah. So, so we'll see. We'll see how the second one goes. That one, I that one will be editing tomorrow probably, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see how that one goes for next week. So what what I what I'm most impressed by is Jaws of the Lion does what it sets out to do. It's exactly the point of this box set is to make Gloomhaven more accessible to people, and this is by far. If anyone was like, "Oh, I kind of want to get into Gloomhaven," I'm going to tell them about Jaws of the Lion. I don't suggest anyone jump to the full game. And it's probably going to be the same thing for Frosthaven when it comes out. Jaws of the Lion is your starting spot. This is your, you're going to get onboarded so much better. It's going to slowly ramp up. It's going to show you how to play. It's going to point out to you that this is not your 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 typical Dungeons and Dragons, roll the dice, beat up the bad guys kind of game. Uh, the step-by-step introductory scenarios are brilliant. As for the rules changes, I liked all of them. Um, there's going to be a number of groups out there that take these and put them into Gloomhaven, and I can see it. I am going, we're going to have to sit down once Tori and Kat are back over and we're playing and talk about including some of these. Like being able to trade things, I don't think it's going to break Gloomhaven. Plus, I, the new line of sight rules, I think that one I'm going to insist. Like, I don't care. Sorry, we're using those people. Yeah, are, I don't, I don't see do Tori it. especially. I don't see arguing about that. Because yeah, exactly. you guys, the number of times, again, you know, again, as a viewer, as someone who watches your Gloomhaven plays, yeah. line of sight questions come up a lot. All the time. All the, and, and our guy in the chair points us <laughs> points yep. out when we mess them up often. Yep. The other thing that I really like about Jaws of the Lion is I now have a version of Gloomhaven I could bring down to the CG realm and show off. I could sit the uh, scenario 5 or scenario 4 and show other people how to play without spoiling anything. The original Gloomhaven, yes, you can go back and replay through a scenario, but I don't want to hand anyone uh, the whatever ver vermly mind thief deck who's never played before and say go, which is how you had to do it before. Yeah. I, I like I could easily sit down and do a demo night, say at the CG realm, give me a one hour time slot and get people through scenario one through four or one through three, at least, and then probably explain how four and five work and probably sell significant copies of the game just by doing that. Yeah. And I can totally see sitting down and maybe playing scenario 17 in this a lot easier than breaking out Gloomhaven to play a scenario I've already beaten before. Yeah. Well, 
For a more in-depth look at Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, you can head over to tabletopbellhop.com and click on Reviews.